good. I know you're feeling good. You see these beautiful children? Yes, sir. They look good? Yes, sir. And they smile? Yes, sir. The boy's tall? Yes, sir. The girl's pretty? Yes, sir. And how I look? You got coconut head. Sing happy birthday, Charlie. Shut up. Okay, Charlie, go ahead. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Derek? became acquainted with myself and Pastor Charles probably about at least 25 years ago. Um, he was introduced to us and of course um, we were immediately drawn to his personality. He was always very, um, what should I say, accommodating and um, so that's when we met him. <laughs> I have known Minister Derek for about 25 years and um, my time of ministry with him was a, a delight. He was present for rehearsals um, but he left on time, he was present on time and if he committed to one hour in rehearsal, he was stringent with that one, that one hour. I would like for Derek to be remembered as someone who who was fun-loving, committed, yes, dedicated to his area of ministry. Um, as a guitar player, um, Derek was very faithful and, and he, he was serious about um, what, he, what he had to do. You know, like I said, some mornings, many mornings, he was the first musician to be there to uh, tune up his guitar and um, when it was time for ministry um, it was like a different person in the sense of his seriousness taking it seriously seriously taking his area of ministry uh, and, and the opportunities given to minister but um, um, he knew how to have fun and laughter when there were times in social events and, and rehearsals when uh, we may have been rehearsing and practicing for, for a while, um, for a long period of time, he would just throw candies up in there and, and that would break all the tension we may have had. You know, that, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. I think some of the, the songs that he wrote, um, especially the one about Creation. I think he has a video of that, and he did that several times, uh, uh, several times before in the uh, in the um, in fellowship. Um, his passion, uh, and also his son, Derek Jr. You know, um, that's a legacy of left. I'm sure Derek can share on the impact that Minister Derek has had in his life in terms of faithfulness, commitment. To, um, to ministry. I met Mr. Adams when I first came to BFM and signed on as a new MD. And um, he was actually um, the warmest person um, in terms of like personality, uh, acceptance um, that I met when I walked in. Um, he made me feel comfortable on the spot. You know, I remember um, my first my first Sunday, my first official Sunday, when I was walking up to the the keyboard. Um, he he did this. You know how he does that. He did that motion to me to come to him, and so I went. And he was like, um, he said, I he said, I see it on your 
I say, well, you see what? He said, um, he said, you can do really well. He said, you're the man for this job. And that boosted my confidence because I was, he didn't know, or maybe he did, but I was really nervous on my first Sunday, my first official Sunday, really nervous. And when we had that 30 second conversation, all that went out the window. And um, it, it was an amazing Sunday. And ever since then, um, he's just been, you know, um, someone I could get some good advice from. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's how we met. That's my first time meeting him. That's how I remember it. So I first met Mr. Adams, I think on a more personal level, around the spring of 2019. Before that, I can't say that I knew him uh, very well. I knew of him. Interestingly, he did a birthday party for my little cousin a few years prior to that. So I always knew the character Charlie the Yellow Bahamian, but I never connected the two that Mr. Derek Adams Sr., who played the bass so well on Sunday morning, was actually Charlie the Yellow Bahamian, or the voice behind Charlie the Yellow Bahamian. My first ministry experience with him was as we were preparing for our very first Lit Friday, which was a part of the relaunch for our Sparks Children's Ministry. Lit is, was leaders in training, and it was a fun event where children could learn about godly characteristics and, and Bible characters in a very fun way. And so we were setting up our very first event, which would have been on a Friday night. And I remember Pastor Angie saying, hey, you know, the guy who does Charlie Yellow Bahamian, he is a member here at the church. He does a show at McDonald's. Come and go with me. Let's see the show. I think he'd be a great addition to the Lit Friday. And so we went to McDonald's. I think it was a Tuesday or Wednesday because he had a consistent program with McDonald's at the different, at the various restaurants and was able to really see him in action. And I mean, the children were so engaged with him, with everything that he was doing. McDonald's provided a meal and he provided the entertainment, but at the end of the day, they left with not just their bellies full, but with their hearts full as well. Derek Adams was an extraordinary man of God. He loved his creator passionately. He loved his family deeply. His focus on his ministry was with a very, very deep conviction. He was a person that believed in excellence when it came to serving his God. When it came to ministering, whether it was playing his guitar in praise and worship, doing special music, or leading praise and worship services, he would always arrive at church at least one hour ahead of time before his scheduled time to ensure that his guitar, his microphone, and his soundtrack were checked and coming through the system just right. Well, I would say I first met Mr. Adams when I was a young girl in the 1970s. I would say I knew him for about 40 years. In ministry, as I would say my first experience with him would have been when he came to do uh, Lit Fridays. We had the Lit Fridays and he would come on and do events for us. Um, but I think I, I can even go back further when he would come in and do um, special events for the children's ministry. Um, I remember him coming in there for, to, to, to minister to our children. I don't remember the exact date when I met Derek, but I remember it was at Evangelistic Temple on Collins Avenue. They were having some special event and he was there. And I remember he came in this uh, hyped up car. This, um, it was a fast car. And I remember he pulled into the parking lot with the tires spinning and everything and burning rubber. So that's, that was my first recollection of, of, of meeting Derek. <laughs> At the time when I met him, we didn't really have a relationship. I just knew him from his uh, Charlie the Yellow Bahamian thing because we were both doing an event together and um, he, he did his thing and I did my thing. And you know, we, we talked briefly, but we didn't really have a, a relationship. My relationship with him began when he came to BFM. So when he began at BFM, I got to know him a lot better. 
with him being on the worship team, and then with me doing a lot of things with young people, uh, with teenagers, it sometimes it spilled over into doing things with children. So that's how we, we connected. And we connected um, with him being a part of the worship team as well. And, you know, we became friends. Later on, he, I, I found out that he was doing landscaping. And uh, so he began to do the landscaping for my home. And so that, that furthered our relationship. And we would talk about church. We would talk about life. Um, one of the interesting things is uh, I knew about his background because he had some challenges, just like I had some challenges with legal stuff, you know, I mean, stuff in the, in the world of crime and so on. And uh, we had a number of talks about how he was resilient in coming back because sometimes when you go through legal situations, people don't want to give you a job. People kind of look down on you, but um, he had made his own way. You know, he started his landscaping company, built his business. And so we talked about things like that. And we also talked about uh, helping young men in particular, because he had a very, you know, powerful story to tell of overcoming adversity. And um, that was something that I was doing. He wasn't quite ready to talk about the details of his story, but uh, we talked about in the future, he would, uh, he would talk more in detail about it. So that's how we kind of got close through him doing landscaping for me and then being here in the worship ministry and being involved in the children's ministry. My relationship with um, Minister Derek Adams was a very unique one. Um, he has some 30 plus years on me and um, it was a very humbling uh, experience being able to serve him as his leader and just to see his heart and his excitement um, to show up. I mean, one of the things I remember about uh, Minister Derek, uh, no matter what the service was, no matter what the event was, whatever that call time was, that call time was 7 a.m., he would be there strumming his guitar from 6.15. I mean, you would walk into the room and you would just light right up the room. You, you couldn't help, like if you was having a bad day, you couldn't help but to put a smile on your face because he was just on that stage waiting, worshiping, playing, tuning his guitar. And um, that's something I took away from him. He was always committed. He was always dedicated. Um, one of the first things he told me was, yo, Vince, uh, when I came on as, as the worship director, he was like, I support you. Um, one of the few persons um, that said that, um, no matter what, man, he, he, I mean, no matter what, he would notice frustrations or he would notice me having to deal with certain people and certain situations from a distance. And in passing, he's like, man, brother, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you, you know, um, keep going, keep pushing. Uh, 60 seconds left on the clock, you go with God, you know, do your thing. I mean, he was always that big motivating factor. And for him to be uh, 60 plus and... Um, it just, he didn't say much, but he represented a lot. Um, and so that was, it was just humbling just knowing that um, somebody at his age and, and his caliber um, can sit so humbly under someone like me and uh, allow me to lead them. Um, that was just humbling within itself. He was invited to one of our functions um, at least probably 20 some years ago. and. Everybody was drawn to Charlie, of course. Um, but Derek and his bubbly personality, how he introduced Charlie, got all the children and all the adults in the room um, really interested in what was happening. And that was our first uh, meeting with Derek. Every time Derek had an opportunity to minister to the children, he not just ministered to the children, I have to bring in the adults because there's nobody in the room that could keep a straight face once Charlie get going. Um, he was always, like I said, full of joy. Um, that was communicated to everybody in the room. So his service to the children's ministry was invaluable. Every time Derek walked through that door, the kids and the adults was looking for yellow behavior. 
Um, they were anticipating excitement, um, scrambling, because that was one part of his sessions where everybody will be scrambling for candies or uh, candy bars or whatever it is, or involved in playing some uh, trinket or tambourine or whistleblowing. So his ministry made an impact on the children and the teachers in the children's ministry. Minister Derek was literally the life of the party. The first time I met him, he was introduced as Charlie the Yellow Bohemian. He was so good at ventriloquism that he was able to make a puppet come alive, captivating and holding hostage adults and children alike in various settings. He was gifted at engaging the audience, asking them to shout for Charlie to come out, interjecting small jokes such as name tagging someone in the audience as having a coconut head. However, in the midst of the entertainment, he encouraged children to obey their parents and teachers and reminded them of God's love. Derek was also a gifted musician, songwriter, and singer. You know, I, re I can recall on one occasion popping into McDonald's and I heard for the first time the song, Big Mac, Quarter Pounder, Oh, Happy Meal. That song played over and over again in my mind for several days. It was a song he wrote and sang at birthday parties hosted by McDonald's for kids. Whenever he was called on for special music, he ministered with passion and sincerity. Especially the song he wrote about the glory of God's creation. Derek sang the song as if he was singing to an audience of one. Derek was dedicated to the fine arts ministry. Some Sunday mornings, I would come in at 7 a.m. to pray. Minister Derek Adams would be the first musician to come in to tune his guitar and to prepare his heart for ministry. His dedication to serve in ministry was a demonstration of his worship to God. I asked some of the former members of the fine arts ministry about the impression he left on them. Nurse Debbie admired his commitment, even in times of health challenges. Lynette admired his compassion, making weekly calls during her recovery and his phone card gifts. Charlene Brown remembered the monetary gifts he would leave for her in the trees by the altar. I said, wow. And to think, I was settling for chocolate bars. <laughs> yes, Derek had this funny and loving way of giving to members of the fine arts ministry. Many times at social events and rehearsals, he would, re he would rain down candies and chocolates bars as we scrambled to grab them in laughter. So I leave with you this easy trivia question but you only have one second to answer it. Derek knew I had a favorite chocolate bar and it was named after one of BFM's founding fathers. What is the name of that chocolate bar? Oh, Henry. Yes, Oh, Henry is the name of that chocolate bar. <laughs> Personally, I knew him since I came to BFM um, to become the MD. So I say that that would be the last, uh, I guess, six months, I guess. Um, but I knew him long before that. I just didn't know it was him. Um, of course, Charlie. Um, I would be, you know, as a, as a performer, as an entertainer, I would be in a lot of the same places um, that he was in, um, you know, um, like a lot of gospel concerts, like, especially like for children, 
stuff like that he'd be there and i'd be sitting there watching i was like how does he do that like he had the puppet and making the um, changing his voice to sound like the puppet and he's there looking at it but the puppet's talking and the voice is coming from the puppet and i'm like how <laughs> how does he do that you know and um just to see the effect he had on kids it, it was mesmerizing to me so i always followed him i always knew him then i saw him always tiny in stature packing up this stuff and walking away and i never understood where he got so much candy from um but it it it, it, it was a pleasant thing for me. So I always knew him, but I didn't know him personally until I came to BFM and realized that it was the same person. Well, I can say this, whenever we called on Mr. Adams, even though he was not a consistent member of the children's ministry, he, would, he is what we would call our support stars. He would be one of those persons whenever we had a special event, we'd reach out to him because he kind of added the little cherry on top of the cupcake and really took the event over the top. So we would have had him come in when we had watch night services, Easter or resurrection um, services, when we would have had Christmas parties, and of course, Lit Fridays, which was something that was a little bit more consistent pre-COVID. I think above all, what I remember most about Mr. Adams was just his overall loving personality. If I had to compare him to one of the disciples, I'd compare him to John the Beloved because he was just that person that was always wanting to make sure that you were good. He always, when you would see him in passing, whenever he'd always have a word of encouragement, he would constantly tell my husband and I, and he would see my husband more than me um, because they would interact at work and sometimes, you know, two or three times a week, hey, you guys are doing an amazing job. Keep up the good work, be encouraged. That was always his encouragement, even in the hallway, um, you know, if he took a break off of the platform um, in between sets on Sunday mornings, he'd come into the hallway and he would always just encourage. And so he was always about sharing the love and, you know, like kind of living the words of the songs that he, that he shared. You know, one of his songs was Love is an Action Word, and he certainly demonstrated that because he shared that love openly. Derek and Charlie. The Yellow Bohemian was a hit wherever they went. Always in great demand, special treats for the children and even the adults were always the highlights of his shows. His life was music and ministry, always embracing every opportunity, a true friend and brother, always doing what he can to help whomever crosses his path. Derek was also a recording artist. A few of the songs that he did that I enjoyed were Creator, You and Me, and of course, Little Drummer Boy. He indeed is a kingdom citizen, ambassador, always advancing the kingdom through every opportunity. He left a special place in all of our hearts. We salute our minstrel, Derek Adams. I would say my experience watching him serve in the children's ministry was an awe-inspiring one. I, I enjoyed to see, to see how he mesmerized children with the Word of God and um, got their attention. That was very inspirational to me. I think the most memorable thing about Derek Adams would be his smile. No one could miss it. I think that was one of the things that children would see and get their attention. They knew that he came with joy and love and it just welcomed everyone into his world. His legacy is that puppet, how he gets that Charlie to communicate with the children and they communicate with that puppet and, and still get the word of God out to them. The fun, the laughter, and still impact children with the word of God. That's his legacy, impacting children with the word of God. 
Overall, I would like him to be remembered as a man who loved children and who loved God and um, who spent and invested much time in ministering to children. I think that's a great way to be remembered. He was the um, connector for us. He was the man that we look forward to to bring the fun and the word. He was a all-in-one package and um, he will be daily missed by us um, because like we having a children's ministry, um, children stay coming up and he's not there. He, he will be daily missed. He will be daily missed by us. So uh, my first ministry encounter at BFM with Derek was with the children's ministry. As you know, he was very popular in the Bahamas. He was popular at BFM with the children's church and doing Charlie the Yellow Bahamian. And so there was an event for children here and he was, he was doing his thing. And as he always did, he always made fun of us as pastors. And he started out by saying the, the red man in the front with the bald head and you know back and forth making people laugh so that was kind of like the one of the early encounters and then he also did some things on a sunday morning in church uh, which was kind of unusual for children's ministry but of course he had access to whatever we were doing here because he was so effective in, in his ministry when I think about Derek, I think what I will remember most is the same thing that everybody remembers, that he was such a loving and giving person and he had such a, a great expertise in, in dealing with children. So his legacy is about his children's ministry. Now his ministry on the worship team was also powerful, but I think the children's ministry is what everybody's going to remember and it's what I remember most. He was really, really effective and powerful in that arena. And um, he was able to bless so many. And we interacted when the youth ministry and the children's ministry overlapped. So those, those are the things that I remember, his impact on children. When we look at uh, his legacy, uh, there are several components. You know, one is the worship leader. One is the family man, the husband, the father, how he trained uh, Derek in particular to D DJ to um, take over the business and, and, and you know follow him in many ways. Uh, those are very important components of his legacy. But I think the thing that stands out, the thing that puts him in the Hall of Fame above everything else is Charlie the Yellow Bohemian. That's the thing that, that's the most important part of his legacy, I believe. It's something that is unique. It's something that nobody else did. And in fact, nobody is still doing it in the Bahamas, but it captivated young people from schools and churches and everywhere. So that's, that's the most important part of his legacy that I believe will live on. I think that, you know, when, it, when, I, when I had to do his eulogy, I called him, a joyful overcomer. I think he will be remembered for bringing joy to the hearts of people, not only children, but adults as well. He made you laugh, he made you think, and even in all his laughter and all of the joy that he brought, there was always a powerful message. So I think that is the, the, one of the lasting things that is stuck on my mind and on the minds of many, that he was, he, he was a joyful overcomer. He brought joy to everybody. He over, overcame adversity, and he used his experience to bring joy to so many, and that's what, that's what I'll remember. Derek Adams is a staple, not just at bah in Bahamas Faith Ministries, but he is a staple to the world. He, he, he has represented and impacted so many generations. Um, not just with his singing and his music ability, um, but also just from a very young age. When you, talk, when you think about training up a child in the way they should go, when you think about um, you know, training children and what children represents, 
um, to the kingdom of God. He played a very big role through Charlie the Yellow Bahamian um, in empowering so many young people and, and doing it with grace and, and having a, a, a kingdom mind, a kingdom foundation and all of it. And so I think his legacy should be remembered beyond Bahamas Faith Ministries but in the hearts and the minds and the lives of so many young people. Um, I've, I didn't really have an opportunity as a young one to um, experience Charlie, um, but coming into my adult years and my adult life and even uh, during his passing, seeing so many young people from so many people, just not just young people, but so many people from all different generations, uh, remembering the impact um, was mind-blowing for me uh, having a purpose to lead him as his leader as his worship arts leader um, it just reminded me of how humble he was and how soft-spoken he was but how impactful he was all at the same time how influential he was so i think his legacy should represent all of that impact it should remind us of humble beginnings and being humble uh, all that that he represented um we should always remember that i mean he found a unique way to give of himself I mean, you would never be in the presence of Dave, Derek Adams Sr. and he never had something to give. Whether it was a word of encouragement, whether it was some chocolates, whether it was a Skittles, whatever it was he had, whether it was a song, whether it was whatever, Derek Adams always had something to give. And I think his legacy will be remembered of on that level of him, a man that always gave of himself, always having something to give. and that will be something that I will remember and I think the world will remember. He gave of himself, he gave of his gifts, he gave of his talent, and that is something that you don't see no more in this day and time, and so that's commemorable. So I'm gonna remember Derek Adams Sr. as someone that gave, gave, gave of his heart, gave of his finances, gave of his treasures, uh, and just gave of his love, and, and that is what he's gonna be remembered as. Minister Derek Adams was accommodating um, he would make himself available anytime he was contacted to assist in the children's ministry um, that was I think his part of his legacy his openness and willingness to assist anytime anywhere he would come and bring Charlie um, bring all of his uh, should I say tools um, and I always wondered how many candy bags he has because there was never a shortage. He will always bring enough for everybody to share. Um, that is something I will always remember, his accommodating spirit, his joyfulness, his jovial um, character. It wasn't just Charlie, it was him. His character came through Charlie and that's why everybody loved Charlie as well as him. Joy, I think, encapsulates everything Minister Adams was. Um, his whole spirit being, his, his mannerisms, his... Um, he was just joy. Once he walks through that door, uh, joy came. <laughs> and that's what I, I think and Pastor Charles remember about him most. His servant spirit, um, that was another thing that came through. He was so humble. Uh, he was accommodating, reliable, always there when you need him. Uh, somebody you can count on. Once you can tag him, he will be there. Uh, his legacy, but his, the number one thing I think that came out to us is joy. Every time he came around, joy came. It was present. No matter how you were feeling that day, the most hardened of minister sitting up there with a straight face. Once Charlie started, or Mr. Adams started to minister, a smile will crack at the end of that mouth and it will start going to the next end. Uh, it was just a joy to have Minister Adams and Charlie around. And I think that along with his giving spirit, his always being accommodating, that's the legacy of Charlie, and it should go on. We always need somebody that brings joy to persons around them. Derek, to me, Derek was, he was the glue to me. He was the glue that kind of kept 
everything intact. He would always be, he would always be the voice of reason, if I could describe it like that. You know, um, we'd all have our opinions on things, and then you know, quietly he'd just kind of creep in there and be like, "But you know," and then he'd quote a scripture, and then give us a life experience, and we'd be like, "Okay." Yeah, all right. We we could go with that. So he was kind of like the voice, the voice of reason. He kept us calm, cool, and collective, and um, he kept us focused. I think that's the word I should use. He definitely kept the band focused. You know, always uh, reminded us of our responsibilities and, and and why we were in place. You know, purpose for being there. So he was definitely the glue. I think what I remember him the most for. It's, it's kind of twofold. Um, one would be his commitment. Definitely his commitment. Um, obviously, he was considerably older than the rest of us. But he seemed to, and I don't know if this is an indictment on me, but, I, but he seemed to put more effort into doing, uh, carrying out his responsibilities than everybody else, even though he was a lot older, you know? Um, sure, sure, we're all talented and, and um, you know, blessed by the Most High to be able to do some things. And um, of course, you're carrying out your obligations and your con contractual obligations and your commitments. But for him, it seemed to be so much more and so much, so much deeper, you know. And I use that as a driving force to actually help me with my own personal commitment to making sure I carry out my duties here at BFM. So his commitment would probably be the, the first part of the twofold. The second part would be uh, his, his, love, his love for God. I think that would be the second part of it because to see how he would worship while we were actually um, playing, while we were actually singing and playing, to hear him behind me and to see how he would actually worship, how he would actually pour himself into the worship. It was almost like he was an audience receiving the worship and worshiping God as opposed to being a part of the team that was delivering the worship, you know? So for me, it would be those two things, his commitment and his love for God. I think I remember those most. I think his legacy is just that. His legacy was one the, of love. He showed that love was an action word, that he demonstrated love with those who he came into contact with. He would always have a kind word on the tip of his tongue. He would always be willing to give. Um, he would always give more than he took. You know, one of the things I always took note of was a part of his program with Charlie the Yellow Bahamian, he would give out candies. And so he would have candies enough for the children, enough for the parents who were there at the event, enough for the workers at the event. And there's really no logical way that he'd be able to provide all of those candies and still make a profit based on the amount that he really charged. And so that was evident to me that he wasn't doing this for profit. He was really doing it because he loved what he did. He wanted to make sure that at the end of the day, these children had a positive message that they could walk away with, that they were smiling because they enjoyed the candy, but they got a sweet message as well. I think if we can all just live that legacy of love, um, which is Christ's legacy, um, we would all be better for it. Um, one thing I'd always say, you know, Mr. Adams was always on time. You could depend on him. <laughs> and um, you'd be, de and depending on the fact that he would never cut you short. He would always have something kind to say. And so if we could all be that consistent, whether we're feeling good or feeling bad, but always in, a, in the kind of mood where we are looking out for one another, that we're, we're giving more than we're taking, and we're loving even when we don't receive it in return. So I think Mr. Adams and Charlie the Yellow Bahamian, by extension, would have impacted the children's ministry. He added a dose of creativity. Um, in addition to his program, he would always be sharing ideas of different things that we could do to improve our methods of what we did. So, for example, just to take everything up to the next level, he himself was a very creative person. You can imagine as a puppeteer, as someone who sang songs, and he found a way to weave in to his presentations the Word of God. And so I think at the end of the day, as a children's ministry, we're able to walk away with there's more than one way to 
impact this next generation, that we can do it through positive songs, we can do it um, through a, a rhyme, we can even do it through puppetry, there's so many ways. And no matter what your way is, um, it all works together for the good of the kingdom. One thing that we're doing here at Bahamas Faith Ministries, Derek Adams um, was someone that we honor, we remember. Um, he was someone that was a pillar of strength for me personally as a leader. Um, just some stories I can think of when it came to him. He would come to me and you know, every so often he was like, man, um, you know, we're, I was in that transitional period um, of you know, resetting the ministry and um, you know, looking at some things and setting the standards within the ministry. And Derek Adams, every so often, man, Mark, it's my time, man, I'm ready to sing again, I'm ready to sing again. And um, he always had a passion for music. He spoke to me about his music endeavors and the original songs that he did. Um, his son uh, is and, and continues to be an anchor in the media department. And so one of the things that we're going to be doing here is we're going to be dedicating our studio. We're going to name it after Derek Adams because we want to be able to keep his legacy, his life, uh, uh, his heart alive. We want anyone that walk in our presence experience the light that a Derek Adams brought. And so that's what we're going to be doing to keep his legacy alive here at Bahamas Faith Ministries. Uh, our new crowd worship recording studio will be named in honor of Derek Adams Sr. And we're so excited to be able to produce some amazing music, um, reintroduce some of his music um, to the world. Um, because one of the songs I remember him as uh, to do was Love is an Action Word. And I think he embodied that so well. Um, because he just continued to give. That he just never used that four-letter word. It's just a four-letter word. He he, exam he 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 exemplified that love is an action word, and he represented that. So we're gonna show love the way that Derek Adams wanted to, us to show love, the way that he would do it. Everything that we do, we can do it the Derek Adams way, and that's just you know, in full gratitude and expression of 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 love. And so that's how we're gonna keep his legacy alive. That's how we're gonna continue doing what we do here uh, with Grace uh, because he just did it so well. I know because of my technical background uh, and working in the ministry over the years, uh, Derek was one of those persons who also did a lot of ministry outside of BFM. And I remembered uh, him understanding and learning about my technical background and he brought a whole bag of cables and said, Pastor, I hear that you're a technical man. And I would like the family if you can really check these cables for me. I said, no problem, Mr. Adams. I would be happy to. I've known Derek for over 20 years. It was always a special treat for me personally because of our rapport and our relationship over the years. Uh, whenever he was getting ready to minister and serve in whatever capacity he was called on to serve in, he always exemplified excellence. He always put forward his best. He said, this is for God. And if this is for God, it deserved my best. Always, that was his position. One of the things that I really, really, really appreciated about Mr. Adams is that he was a consistent person. He was always the same whenever you communicated with him. Whenever you interacted with him, he was the same person across the board. I think his overall impact was phenomenal. He loved worship. Worship was a part of his life. Uh, and then second to worship, he enjoyed those special shows with Charlie the Yellow Bohemian. Uh, not only did the children enjoy those shows, but the adults enjoyed them as well. And they look forward to those special treats. They try to override the children when it comes to ensuring that they get as many of those special treats when they were distributed to the audience uh, during those shows. One of the things that really impacted my life personally from uh, Brother Derek when it comes to music and really serving God, he was one of those persons when there was nothing going on at church, he would take his equipment and go into different communities and have street meetings and allow souls to be entered into the kingdom as a result of what he did. He was in evangelism in his own right, not waiting on a church to set up an evangelism meeting or outreach. 
he would go in those communities and just worship the Lord and souls were impacted as a result of his ministry going into those communities. And so I really, really appreciate this brother who had a heart for God, who had a heart for souls, and he always wanted to see souls coming into the kingdom. That's kingdom advancement. I would like him to be remembered as a person who, first of all, first and foremost, served God wholeheartedly. He, whatever he did, he strived for excellence at all cost. And he, with his show, Charlie and the Yellow Bohemian, if that legacy can continue, I think that will be the thing that we would really want to see moving forward and staying alive in this, from this life. To me, uh, his legacy to me would be uh, his giving, you know, his giving. Um, he, he was definitely um, the most giving person I've, I've ever met. You know, um, to see the way he would give of his personal time, um, his finances, um, uh, his love, and of course his talent, um, to see how he would do that so selflessly, to me, um, it, it was priceless. You know, and I think everyone that grew to love him, that I could see personally, loved him because of that. And I think um, that just helped everything that was around him just to thrive that much more. So to me, I, I think his legacy would be um, the way that he gave selflessly. I think that's what it would be. I wish we could hang that guitar from the rafters. <laughs> um, but. I, I would definitely just want him to be remembered. We gotta remember Charlie. Well, that's, that's the first thing. We have to remember that forever and ever and ever. I'm gonna tell all my kids about that. You know, cause they were never personally able to experience that, unfortunately. But um, we gotta remember Charlie because I think Charlie changed so many kids, so many kids' lives. Because he, he not only um, helped them to have a good time, but he also, taught them about the existence of the Most High, the existence of God and His love, the existence of kindness, of caring, thoughtfulness. He taught a lot of children about things like that. Um, so we definitely got to remember Charlie. And of course, I want people to remember um, the way he gave of himself. And um, maybe unlikely, but I want people to remember his music. You know, I heard some of his his music, he would pull me on the side and let me hear some of his songs from his upcoming album, and they were amazing. As a songwriter, he was so talented, and I'm not sure that the amount of people that could have learned about that actually knew. Um, he had amazing songwriting skills and was an amazing singer. So those are the things I think um, I would like to be remembered most about Derek. Some of my most memorable moments uh, of Derek Adams Sr. would have to be, uh, man, uh, the, our very last encounter. Our very last encounter. Um, I was all the way in the back of the room. We were, we were done with sound check, um, getting ready for service. It was a little after nine. Um, he put down his guitar, you know, and I went to get ready for service and he caught me from the back of the room and he was so excited, so, so excited. Um, he was like, hey Vince, hey Vince. I didn't hear him at first. And he was like, hey Vince again. Um, Cause you know, a little deaf, right? But anyway, that's not here, not there, right? But he's like, hey Vince. And so I turned back around, went back to the stage. I thought it was something that was going on, but he was so excited to say, man, I brought some stew fish and some stew conk for the team. I was like, what? Yeah, man, I had the wife do some stew conk and some stew fish and, and he, uh, it was like, you could choose, you could choose, man. Make sure you choose, get your stoop. Like he was, he was really excited. He did that just for the band, myself and, and my assistant, Lisa. And it, he was, he was so excited to share in that moment. That was our very last encounter, that very day that, that um, he had the heart attack here at, during ministry. Um, and just thinking through of less than two hours later, um, he, he, he had the episode here where he where he passed out and um, just thinking about just his random 
justice. Like I would just be walking, minding my own business, and he would just hold his hand out to shake my hand, and he would just drop a Kit Kat in the middle of my hand and be like, like, and then walk off and just smile and be like, I got you, brother. You know, those moments meant so much to me that in that moment he felt the need to do that. He felt the need to give up himself um, in that way. To, and he just had different ways of reminding you that he is there, that he's praying for you, um, that he thinks of you just by the random acts of kindness. Um, and so when I think of love as an action word, I, 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 I think about Derek Adams. When I think of the word love, I think of Derek Adams. I can go on, on and on and, and continue to tell so much more stories, but every story that I'm gonna tell is consistent with his heart of wanting to give of himself in that four letter word, L-O-V-E, L-O-V-E. Everything about, everything about Derek Adams was love. Um, even if he didn't like you, he's like, yeah, but I still love you, but I like you. You know, like, <laughs> like that's how real he was. Like he was so real where he'd be like, listen, I don't agree with that. Um, you know, we shouldn't do that. Or if someone sound bad, he'd be like, and then, then, then you try that again. They didn't sound all that good. Um, but he was honest, but he, 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 he was loving in his honesty as well. And so, um, whenever there was an issue, I remember there was, there was an issue that went around that went on uh, in the department that I had to deal with. And he pulled me on the side and he's like, now nah, I'm not gonna tell you what to do because you know what to do. Just know I'm praying that you do it. And then he walked off and I was like, wow. Um, that in itself was wisdom. He even taught me on how to deal and how to lead people um, with a great level of, of wisdom. I would pull up on the property in the middle of the week and I would just see him mowing the lawn and, 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 and doing his other gifts of acts of services to the ministry and I, it, it was just encouraging. I can go on and on, but my memorable moments of Derek Adams Sr. would definitely have to be every act of love that just came in a different form, but it came from the same place. And um, that is something that I would never forget. Um, it humbled me, his ability to show up an hour before. And he was like, listen, if you're on time, you're late. If you're before time, you're on time. And if you're late, absolutely unacceptable. He just didn't say that he lived that. Because he said only what's done for Christ will last. He always said that money is not the greatest treasure. Your heart, and where your heart lies is the greatest treasure. These are some of the things that, that, that he echoed consistently. And um, he just didn't say that. He was about that. And that is some of the most memorable moments that I'm gonna take away as a leader, as a brother, as a friend, as a son. Being able to serve somebody that is three times my age but followed me with a level of grace, trusted me. As a leader, that's something you can never pay for. That's something you can never buy. And for him to be that guy to do that, um, Derek Adams Sr., I know you look down on us every day, and we want you to know that we're fighting, we remember you, we honor you, we celebrate you, and we will continue in the act of love and kindness that you did so gracefully. And we will remember you and we will represent you the way that you would want to be represented because you represented the kingdom of God and you represented in true fashion that four letter word, L-O-V-E. We love you.
wants you to trust him. On him you can rely.